is Fernando. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Sooner. And our mission is empowering people with the freedom of mobility. We're doing so by creating wearable devices like this one that I have in my hand that at their core use proximity sensing technologies, enabling our users to better perceive the things that are around them so that they can safely navigate their immediate surroundings or environment. Now we probably don't think much about it when we ever have to go somewhere, whether we're walking, biking, or driving, for us it's not a big deal. Even if we just want to walk around here and network with friends. But for the, for the millions of people who are blind or have a severe visual impairment, it is a huge deal. Even though the white cane has significantly improved the quality of life of millions, it still doesn't change certain circumstances. Number one, the stress and the anxiety of just having to go somewhere is pretty big. Number two, just dealing with the stigma of being labeled that just goes along with having the condition. And three, is a risk that you take on every day when you go somewhere. Injuries to the body and to the head happen way too frequently. So what if we could do something to change the mobility experience and make it more enjoyable. Sunu started out in a school in Guadalajara, Mexico, where the first prototypes were used well, by, with children uh, during play. And the, the kids were starting to solve mazes and running around and starting to play tag. Well, the teachers and the parents of the school took notice and they crowdfunded the development of the first prototypes. Since then, we've been iterating and developing right alongside the people we wanted to serve. So I'm going to try to demonstrate. Sunu is a wristband that can be worn on either hand. It uses a sonar sensor to detect the proximity of objects or people or things that are within the person's path. Sunu uses haptic feedback, delivering vibrations to the person's wrist. Those vibrations intensify as a person gets closer to a person or an object. I'm going to use a speaker to, so that you guys can hear how the, um, how the feedback happens. So that happens, that's how the feedback changes as I get closer to something. And as I get further away, so the person basically wears this on the wrist. It's very discreet. And just walking around. The curse of the life demo sometimes. <laughs> so, Sudo is meant not to substitute the cane or the guide dog yet. We want it to be an augmentative technology that works right alongside existing AT. So that way we can give the person a better perception of what's the stuff that's around them, especially objects that are above the torso and at the head. Our, our users have found it easy to use uh, and intuitive. And also, again, it's discreet, comes in different colors. And so it also has uh, comes along with a tag or a beacon that our users can attach to purses or keys or, got, or other personal items so they can find things that, that, are, that may be misplaced. We're working right alongside with the um, industry uh, leader, Perkins, testing and developing the product. We'll be bringing it to market in the fall of, of, of this year at an affordable price point, which goes along with our mission. We want to bring this to as many people as we can uh, working with various channel partners so that we can um, even take it to different countries and developing world. This is the team that I get to work with. They're amazing folks. Uh, Marco Trujillo and Quali are both engineers uh, and together have won many prizes internationally. And Fabi brings the business and logistics brain, brains to the operation. Myself, I'm an entrepreneur, user of AT throughout my entire life. We're Sunu and we're helping people move freely. Thank you. In a perfect world, what assistive uh, infrastructure would you like to see? 
In a perfect world, what our vision is that we can bring devices like this that bring around personal uh, uh, personal proximity sensing, combining that with mobile technologies so that caregivers can have information about the people that they want to, uh, that they're serving or caring about, and then uh, combining, uh, also leveraging beacons or low power Bluetooth devices that could give you information about where's the restroom or where's the, um, the elevator in the space, <laughs> all around reducing the stress and the anxiety of having to be mobile. Yes. Um, oh, yes. What's the size of the market? The size of the market right now, uh, so we're looking at $5 billion a year spent on uh, living, independent living aid for, for people uh, who have visual impairments. So one in 50 Americans are completely, uh, have complete visual uh, vision loss, but 20 million Americans, uh, according to the census, will have either macular degeneration or some form of peripheral vision. So the market's actually much bigger than just people who are uh, in the area of complete blindness. We feel that we have an application for even elderly who have that complete, just a bit of vision loss and want to wear something discreet that gives them more security when they're walking around. I just want to, I also, one thing I just forgot to mention is that we feel, and I didn't talk about this in the presentation, is that in terms of personal proximity sensing, we can extend this out to other areas. So workers who are uh, in an environment where there's a lot of vehicles, or heavy machineries. Imagine having a device like this where you can clip on a sensor on your back and have eyes on the back of your head telling you if there's something that's approaching or a car uh, or you're in a, in a dangerous situation. And also like in sports uh, for cycling. I'm sorry? Uh, Thank you. Yes. <laughs> if sonar technology has been around for a couple of decades, what prevents a dozen competitors from a bit of break? And how do you erect some barriers to entry? Yeah, so we're working on, a, and that's absolutely true. There, sonar technology's actually been in this field for, for a bit. Uh, there, there is something, there's a product called uh, Sonic Cane. Uh, they developed their product, but they use an audible feedback, and that's obtrusive to the, uh, to the individual's uh, senses. Uh, in terms of putting up some barriers, uh, we're, we, have, you know, we have an IP strategy around the electronics and also uh, the positioning of the sensor uh, and how it works with your, with your actual body. Uh, yes. Um, so I saw whenever you were walking around that you, once the object got close to the sensor, it started beeping. What is to, is it, is the sensor directional? Like, does it have to be right in front of the sensor? Or can it warn you that you're about to hit your head on a low-hanging beam or something? Yes, uh, that's a very good question. So um, the sensor is directional. What happens is we can we can actually <coughs> tune the mode of the sensor. So again, one of the things that we're working on in our, in our IP is that the user can actually select in the interface how to change the sensitivity. So think of this as, as, a, as a cone that comes out uh, from the sensor. So I can detect a certain region about two meters in front of me. Uh, we can we can have a high sensitivity mode uh, that will detect those two meters, or a, sen a lower sensitivity mode, kind of more of a beam that then will work in confined spaces. So, say you're in South Station and you want to walk around between people, that mode will enable you to find gaps between individuals and actually find doorways. And that is the mode that I was demonstrating tonight. Oh yes. So what's the battery life? The battery life is about 12 hours, so we recommend people to charge it. Uh, uh, that's 12 hours of continuous use. Uh, we recommend people to charge it uh, every eight hours. And the way it works is just like a wireless toothbrush. You just uh, we have a charging station that you just place it on top, and it charges within an hour. Okay. Uh, yes. So, have you created any new components for that, or are you integrating existing technology? A little bit of both. We we've created our own um, our own circuitry. Uh, one of our co-founders, uh, again, they have a, a background in electronics. Uh, so we have our, our pretty much our own boards, uh, components, uh, and then we we these sensors we can get them from suppliers and manufacturers around the world. Mm -hmm. Yes. What sort of uh, issues did your user testing uh, bring up? Oh, that's a really good question. Yes, so issues around user testing so far, 
Uh, we, we're doing a beta, uh, invited beta, uh, with people around the U.S. and we have other foundations around the world who want to work with us. Uh, so learning how to how to point the sensors, it's very directional. And uh, uh, when you're when some people take a bit longer to learn how to deal with the uh, with directionality of the sensors. Some people, kids, pick it up really fast because they think it's a video game. But most some adults have difficulties learning how to adapt to pointing the sensor. So we've developed an instruction manual uh, and guide to help adults uh, uh, work faster with that. And uh, one more, sorry. You said the feedback was haptic? Yes, I did. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's it. Okay, worth it? Cool.